Friday, November 22nd. It all began so beautifully. After a drizzle in the morning, the sun came out bright and beautiful. We were going into Dallas. In the lead car, President and Mrs. Kennedy, John and Nellie, and then a Secret Service car full of men, and then our car, Lyndon and me, and Senator Yarbrough. The streets were lined with people, lots and lots of children, all smiling, placards, confetti, people waving from windows. One last happy moment I had was looking up and seeing Mary Griffith leaning out of a window, waving at me. Then almost at the edge of town, on our way to the trademark where we were going to have the luncheon, we were rounding a curve, going down a hill. Suddenly, there was a sharp, loud, report, a shot. It seemed to me to come from the right above my shoulder from a building. Then one moment and then two more shots in rapid succession. There'd been such a gala air that I thought it must be firecrackers or some sort of celebration. But then, in the lead car, the Secret Service men were suddenly down. I heard over the radio system, let's get out of here. An ISS man who was with us, Ruth Youngblood, I believe it was, vaulted over the front seat on top of Lyndon, threw him to the floor, and said, get down. Senator Yarber and I ducked our heads. The cars accelerated terrifically fast, faster and faster. Then suddenly, they put on the brakes so hard that I wondered if they were going to make it as they wheeled left around the corner. We pulled up to a building. I looked up and saw it said hospital. Only then did I believe that this might be what it was. Yarbrough kept on saying an excited voice, have they shot the president? Have they shot the president? I said something like, no, can't be. As we ground to a halt, we were still the third car. The Secret Service men began to pull, lead, guide, hustle us out. I cast one last look back over my shoulder and saw a bundle of pink, just like a, a drift blossom lying in the back seat. I, I think it was Mrs. Kennedy lying over the president's body. They led us to the right, to the left, onward into a quiet room in the hospital, a very small room. It was lined with white sheets, I believe. People came and went. Kenny O'Donnell, Congressman Thornberry, Congressman Jack Brooks. Always uh, there was Ruth right there, Emory Roberts, Jerry Kivett, Lim Johns, Woody Taylor. There was talk about where would we go? Back to Washington, 
to the plane, to our house. People spoke of how widespread this may be. Throughout it all, Lyndon was remarkably calm and quiet. He said we'd better move the plane to another part of the field. He spoke of going back out to the plane in black cars. Every face that came in, you searched for the answers that you must know. I think the face I kept on seeing it on was the face of Kenny O'Donnell, who loved him so much. It was Lyndon, as usual, who thought of it, although I wasn't going to leave without doing it. He said, you'd better try to see if you can see Jackie and Nellie. We didn't know what had happened to John. I asked the Secret Service if I could be take them, taken to them. Uh, they began to lead me. Up one corridor, back stairs, down another.